The Cannon-Bard theory of emotion suggests that emotions and physical reactions happen at the same time, rather than one causing the other. According to this theory, when a person experiences an emotional event, the brain processes it and sends signals to both the body and the conscious mind at once. For example, if someone sees a bear in the woods, they will feel fear and experience physical responses like a racing heart at the same time, rather than first feeling fear and then reacting physically. This theory challenges earlier ideas that suggested emotions come only after physical changes. It emphasises the role of the brain in processing emotions quickly and independently of physical responses. The Cannon-Bard theory was developed in the early 20th century by physiologist Walter Cannon and neurologist Philip Bard. Cannon first proposed the idea after studying how animals responded to threats, noticing that their emotional reactions occurred too quickly for physical changes to be the cause. Later, Bard expanded on this work by studying brain structures involved in emotion, particularly the thalamus, which he believed played a key role in processing emotions. Their research challenged the James Lang theory, which argued that emotions result from physical responses. Instead, Cannon and Bard proposed that the brain and body react simultaneously, leading to the development of their influential theory. Now let's look at some examples of the Cannon-Bard theory in everyday life. Imagine a person walking through a dark alley and hearing footsteps behind them. According to the Cannon-Bard theory, they would feel fear and experience a racing heartbeat at the same time. Another example is when someone receives exciting news like winning a competition. They might feel joy and notice their body reacting with increased energy and smiling at the same moment. Similarly, if a person is startled by a loud noise, they may feel surprised while their body tenses instantly. These examples illustrate how emotions and physical reactions occur simultaneously, supporting the ideas behind the Cannon-Bard theory. One strength of the Cannon-Bard theory is that it explains why people can still experience emotions even if their ability to feel certain physical sensations is reduced. For example, individuals with spinal cord injuries who may have limited physical responses can still feel emotions just as strongly. This suggests that emotions are not solely dependent on physical changes. Another strength is that the theory aligns with modern neuroscience, which shows that the brain plays a central role in processing emotions. Research supports the idea that the thalamus quickly sends signals to different parts of the brain and body, allowing emotions and physical reactions to happen at the same time. This makes the Cannon-Bard theory an important contribution to understanding how emotions work. One weakness of the Cannon-Bard theory is that it does not fully explain why different emotions can produce similar physical reactions. For example, fear and excitement can both cause a racing heart, but they feel very different. The theory does not clarify how the brain distinguishes between these emotions if the physical responses are the same. Another weakness is that it does not account for how thoughts and personal experiences influence emotions. People often interpret situations differently based on their past experiences, which affects how they feel. For example, two people may react differently to the same event, one feeling anxious while the other feels excited, depending on their perspective. These limitations suggest that while the Cannon-Bard theory explains part of the emotional process, it may not provide a complete picture. There are alternative theories that explain emotions differently from the Cannon-Bard theory. One well-known alternative is the James Lang theory, which suggests that emotions happen because of physical reactions. According to this theory, a person first experiences physical changes, such as a fast heartbeat, and then interprets those changes as an emotion. Another alternative is the Schachter-Singer two-factor theory, which combines physical reactions with cognitive interpretation. This theory suggests that emotions depend on both bodily responses and how a person labels their experience. A third alternative is the cognitive appraisal theory, which emphasises the role of thought in shaping emotions. It suggests that people evaluate situations before they feel an emotion, meaning that personal interpretation plays a key role. Each of these alternatives provides a different perspective on how emotions are formed and experienced. 